So you probably know about the Huawei ban. In case you don't, please make sure you watch this video first in which I explain the full story, everything that happened with Huawei and how they managed to get banned in the US and in many other countries in Europe as well. But in this video, I'll be covering everything new to this Huawei ban situation, how Huawei is actually going to get unbanned pretty soon uh, and how they're already working on a brand new operating system, a new mobile operating system which will compete with Android. So here's how Huawei might dominate the smartphone market. If you want to browse privately and securely, check out Private Internet Access. PIA works on Mac, Windows, iOS, Android, as well as even Linux, and you'll not only be safe when browsing online, but you'll also get access to websites such as Netflix US from outside the US and get access to more movies and more features. Use the link below to sign up for as little as $3.5 a month. Okay, so our initial video on the whole Huawei situation was back in May, the 30th of May actually, so here's everything that happened since. On May the 29th, 2019, uh, Huawei was heading to court, asking them to rule the US ban as unconstitutional. Then a day later, on May the 30th, the same day our video went live, uh, the SD Association as well as the Wi-Fi Alliance announced that they have now restored Huawei's license. The way they've done it is that they've apparently rephrased the membership that they had with Huawei uh, so that it was still in compliance with the US Department of Commerce. This means that Huawei is now free to use SD cards as well as Wi-Fi in their upcoming smartphones, new Wi-Fi standards basically. Uh, the SD card wasn't that big of a deal, the ban, but of course they're not being able to use the feature standards of Wi-Fi, uh, that would have had a huge impact on Huawei. Then on May the 31st, Huawei ordered employees to cancel any meetings they had with US clients, which was the first sign that Huawei was indeed taking this ban very, very seriously. Now we've had some rumors floating around that Huawei has cut their smartphone manufacturing to nearly half just because of this US ban. However, on June the 3rd, Huawei publicly declined that they've done such a thing, which uh, I honestly don't buy. You know, reducing the number of smartphones that you produce when you have a US ban, and you're also banned from dealing with uh, some European countries is normal, and it's something that every calculator person would, would do. Then on June the 5th, uh, Huawei's chairman, Lian Kua, uh, tells US reporters that they're happy to sign a non-spy agreement with the US, and Donald Trump actually overstepped, that's what they said, uh, when he signed the executive order on May the 15th, uh, since he was basically basing it on a political reason rather than, you know, on actual proof that Huawei was spying on the US government. Okay, so what happened afterwards? Well, on June the 6th, a day later, Huawei signed an agreement with the US's favorite country, yes, <laughs> Russia. Yes, Russia and Huawei have actually inked a deal to help Russia develop their 5G infrastructure. Then, a day later, on June the 7th, Facebook has banned Huawei from pre-installing Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp on their phones. Now, users will still be able to download those apps, but Huawei won't be able to preload them on any of their new phones. Then on June the 10th, we got the first hint that Huawei is definitely considering uh, having an Android alternative in terms of operating systems when they've officially asked developers to start publishing their apps to Huawei's own App Gallery App Store rather than Google's own Play Store. And around the same time, Huawei officially trademarks its own operating system called Hongman OS. Uh, and the same day, they've also registered ArcOS as the name for Ongman OS uh, in the European Union. Okay, but why is this such a big deal? Well, you see, there are only two big smartphone operating systems on the market right now. We have iOS and Android. There's no third option available at all. But why is that? Why do we only have two mobile operating systems instead of one or three or 10 or 20? You see, when the iPhone launched in 2007, it had the world's most advanced mobile operating system, iPhone OS at that time. Uh, Nokia or Nokia had the second most advanced operating system at that time, Symbian, but it just couldn't even compare to iPhone OS. iPhone OS was so, so advanced, about five years ahead of the current competition. But you see, the problem with iPhone OS was that it only worked on Apple iPhones. Um, and not everyone had iPhones, so we needed something to compete with iPhone OS. And that competitor was not Nokia's Symbian. Uh, Nokia, in fact, didn't even take Apple seriously and look at where they're at now, or where they're not. <laughs> From the world's biggest smartphone manufacturer, Nokia almost went bankrupt in a few years um, just because they weren't able to embrace the future. So the iPhone OS's competitor had to be something else. And that something else was Android. Developed by Google and released in 2008, Google was aiming to become the Microsoft of the mobile industry. You know, a company that would provide the operating system to every other smartphone manufacturer in the world, just like Microsoft was providing the operating system to every computer in the world, 
with Windows. Apple was the only one that had a closed off approach since they were only offering Mac OS and iPhone OS to you know, Macs and their own iPhones. While Microsoft and Google both planned to dominate the non-Apple world, and uh, yeah, they did both of them. Google's Android ended up being on 76% of the world's smartphones compared to Apple's 22%. And uh, here's a fun fact, uh, Microsoft's Windows owns 75% of the desktop operating system industry, while Apple is only at 12%. So yeah, 75% for Windows, 76% for Android. And Microsoft did try to be that third mobile operating system with Windows Mobile, but yeah, they, um, they failed. Microsoft has actually announced this year that Windows 10 Mobile will die on December 10th, 2019, when no more updates will be released to all existing users and you cannot even buy a new Windows Mobile phone anymore. So yeah, rest in peace, Windows Mobile. And there were many reasons why Windows Mobile failed, but in my opinion, the main reason was the fact that it was way too late to the party. You see, Windows Phone launched in late 2010, two years after Android and three years after iPhone OS. But only a few smartphones supported it at launch, and it was a very, very restricted operating system, even more so than iOS was. Uh, so the first proper release, Windows Phone 8, only came out in 2012, when Apple's already had iPhone OS for five years and Android was already out for four years as well. So people were already heavily using iOS and Android, and you know people, most people don't like change. They don't want to learn a new, completely new operating system, so they just stuck with iOS or Android, which was something that you know they already knew, rather than getting into this brand new OS from Microsoft. And since the majority of the population was already using iOS and Android, developers made their apps available on those two platforms. They didn't want to invest any resources developing uh, their apps for a third platform that would obviously sell significantly less when compared to iOS and Android, just because people People were not using it. Microsoft also didn't really invest in new app developers or apps at first, so um, yeah, Microsoft's ecosystem was severely lacking because of this, and in the end, they had to close it down entirely. And this is why we only have two big operating systems, iOS and Android. This is why we have two big consoles, uh, the PlayStation and the Xbox. This is why we only have two big operating systems when it comes to smartwatches, watchOS and Wear OS, and this is why we only have two big operating systems when it comes to desktops, Windows and Mac. Something revolutionary releases, and then someone releases a competitor to that product, and that's it. The third product will never be as successful as the original and the original's competitor, and you know, that's just how things are. So this is why I'm a bit skeptical when it comes to Huawei's uh, Hongben OX's success. I, I, don't, I don't really see it working out at all. In fact, Samsung has even tried to make their own operating system, uh, Tizen, which has also failed considerably. They stopped making it on smartphones a few years ago in 2017 actually, uh, and they're now only releasing it on smartwatches and smart appliances, that's it. Now, Huawei's Hongmen OS has actually been in the works since 2012, so yes, this isn't something that Huawei has decided to randomly do just overnight, uh, because of that US ban. However, the development of uh, Hongmen OS has definitely ramped up ever since that uh, US ban. Now, Hongmen OS, interesting enough, is actually a closed source operating system rather than open source like Android is. So it's based on Linux and uh, yeah, overall it's much more similar to iOS than to Android. So that means that the developer and users would actually be more restricted, but a whole operating system would be more secure, more optimized, more fluid, and privacy-wise, it would also be better than Android is. Again, a lot more similar to iOS than uh, to Android. So Hongmen OS or ArcOS, this is how it would be called outside of China, uh, could indeed be a plausible alternative to Android. However, on July the 18th, Huawei Senior Vice President Catherine Chen uh, said that Hongmen OS is not for smartphones and that the company still intends on using Google's Android. And I mean, of course they would say that. Uh, Hongmen was indeed designed to be a replacement for Android, uh, that's what it was made in the first place for. Uh, but if Huawei publicly mentions that, oh yes, we'll be replacing this you know, Android with uh, Hongmen OS because of the ban, that kind of cements the ban even more. Instead, if they say that they have no plans of ditching Android, uh, it will be more likely for US to lift the ban since Huawei will also be uh, making Google millions, if not even billions of dollars in revenue because of you know the millions of customers that Huawei brings to Google in return with you know Android. But realistically, no matter how good Hongmen OS will be, Huawei will still lose a lot when compared to just sticking with Android. You know, this is why they want to stick with you Android. That's where all the consumers are, that's where all the apps are. Hongmen will have none of these, at least not at launch. Now, Huawei did say that Hongmen is actually for industrial use, which was a 
quite interesting. And they also said that it was a very secure and very quick operating system uh, with an extremely low input latency when compared to Android, for example, which seems to be the result of them having that closed off operating system and also working on this for the past seven years. Huawei CEO even said that Hongmen is likely to be faster than Android. And then a report coming from Global Times Taiwan claimed that it is up to 60% faster on the exact same hardware. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a, that's a significant number. And just last week, Huawei has registered another name to their OS trademarks. So alongside Hongmen OS and ArcOS, they've now registered Harmony as a trademark. Now, this is listed as a mobile operating system, computer operating system, and downloadable uh, operating system program. So to me, Harmony looks like something that's quite different from uh, Hongmen, which is called ArcOS outside of China, since it is listed as a separate filing rather than, you know, an addition to that Hongmen filing. So my guess is that Harmony is actually their own operating system for desktops and laptops. So a replacement for Windows rather than a replacement for Android like Hongmen or ArcOS are. Uh, because yes, Huawei has also been banned from dealing with Microsoft. But luckily, there are some pretty good news when it comes to this ban. So Donald Trump has actually agreed to lift restrictions against some US companies from dealing with China, as long as the equipment that they're selling to China doesn't pose a uh, security threat for the US. He said that he'll be working with China to try and make a deal. So <laughs> yeah, from the looks of it, Donald Trump wants to lift some or even all restrictions as long as the US uh, gets some extra revenue from the tech that they're selling and providing to Huawei, which is in the end, it's, you know, it's good. It's a win-win situation for both countries, well, mostly for the US. However, Huawei still remains, as of today, on the Department of Commerce's blacklist. But yeah, from the looks of it, uh, the US is willing to remove the restrictions as long as they can impose higher tariffs for China. But yeah, let me know in the comments your thoughts on this whole Huawei ban situation, and also, what do you guys think of Hongman OS? Do you think it's a replacement of, you know, Android? Do you think it has any chance of competing with Android? Or do you think that no matter how much money Huawei invests in Hongmen OS, it will never ever be able to compete with Android and of course iOS? My final thoughts on this is that if the Chinese people, if they want to use uh, Huawei's new ArcOS, if they actually trust it and, you know, they appreciate that Huawei spends so, so, so much money working on that and they actually use it, then it's going to be used by almost the entire uh, population of China and then it's going to spread to Europe and the US. So I think that's going to be the case, but only if uh, China will actually use the Chinese people Hongmen OS over something like Android or iOS. Also, some good news for consumers uh, regarding this ban is that Huawei smartphones have now become very, very cheap on Amazon. So I left the link in the description for both the P30 Pro and the Mate 20 Pro. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more cool tech videos like this one, definitely subscribe notifications, tap the bell icon so that you get notified whenever a new cool video comes out. Hopefully this was cool and interesting. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll leave a like if you've enjoyed it. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Is that enough tech? Signing out. Cheers.